garbage truck. Garbage truck. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Savage Tech once again, and you guys asked for it. So I'm going to do this to the best of my ability. We are going to have a talking head video reviewing my GPU buying strategies, some of the ones I implement. And of course, that is going to include pricing and what you should be looking at paying for various graphics cards that are currently out on the market. Before that, I did want to mention that we have Rocket Chat back up and running. We did the upgrade to add dark mode support as well as some new features, including push notifications to the mobile application. You can get access by clicking the join button and then selecting the 199 option. And that will provide you with a registration link where you can register and then gain access to the chat. We do this to block spams, bots, and so on. So if you want to have a place to chat with crypto enthusiasts, miners, and just generally tech nerds without getting spammed in your Discord messages with random crypto scams, well, that's the option. That's how we're handling it right now. You can also just cancel that right afterwards if you prefer and just have the account still because once registered, you're always registered. So without further ado, let's talk about some of my mining strategies or GPU buying strategies excuse me, and what I do personally. And the first thing is that, well, right now is not the best time to buy. My initial strategy was to buy last year. If you notice the first mining video that I came out with again, since the hiatus from 2018 on crypto content for this channel, I talked about it in September of this month of last year, sorry, September of 2020. And when we talked about it, then it was still easy to get a hold of graphics cards. This is when you really want to be getting into purchasing graphics cards or mining equipment in general. So what time is that? What can you look at chart wise? Or is there a way to tell when this might be happening? And actually there is. So what I'm going to show you guys here is a quick little hint. All right. So if I go over to the game mode here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and Google Bitcoin having. Okay. So if we take a look at the havings, it's pretty easy to start seeing a pattern, right? Bitcoin halves, the price goes up into a bull market, then for another little bit, it goes into a bear market, then it halves and it kind of goes back up into a bull market, then it kind of goes into a bear market, and then boom, we're on the third wave right now. Now, every time this happens, essentially, the profitability of all cryptocurrency goes up because a rising tide raises all ships. And another note about that, is that the mining profitability goes up. So you can bet your bottom dollar that all those GPUs are gonna go out of stock as these start to go up. So the timing is actually just purely based off of the four year halving of Bitcoin. And so if you are looking at getting into mining, you might even wanna wait until we go back into a bear market and then time it to buy your GPUs before the next halving of Bitcoin. Now this isn't a fail safe plan, right? But this is a pattern that I have noticed and now implemented a couple times and it's worked. So it is something to keep in mind. If you know a halving is coming and you want to get into mining or whatever, you might wanna just hit that bear market, buy a couple GPUs, buy a rig or buy a ASICs, you know, whatever it is and buy it at that time and then kind of hold on to it until you're ready to pop. But I wanna mine now, it's profitable. I know, but you couldn't get the graphics cards when it's profitable. That's why I'm sharing with you guys my GPU buying strategies. I bought everything that's in my farm right now between the months of September and December. And from there on out, I've only gotten a few cards. Now, how did I get those few cards? Let's talk about that. There are a couple strategies that I've utilized. Obviously, we have the basics. So if we go back over here, the basics would be using things like the now in stock. You can turn an alarm on and now in stock, and then you can just sit, you know, do whatever you're doing for the day. And if you hear the alarm go off, 
pop in and try to purchase it. That's a really common one that a lot of people do and it can basically sometimes net you a purchase. I've gotten one off Newegg actually last week. Thanks to a buddy, they actually notified me on Twitter. And let's talk about Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter and I'll retweet when things are in stock. They usually have a one GPU buy limit, but you know, that's part of the deal here. You're gonna buy one at a time when you can. Another thing that you can do is follow RTX bot and they will tweet out, this is the wrong one, <laughs> but there is RTX bot as well. And a few of these that will help you find them. So there's tech stock bot. There's a few different ones, right? Go through, try to find Twitter accounts that are tweeting out when things are available or have availability. And hopefully, you know, you'll catch it at the right time. Maybe put it in a separate list on Twitter because you can create lists and do it for, you know, a list that you can monitor throughout the day. Then finally, the only other way online is really to get signed up for a, basically a list, uh, get on a list with a big manufacturer like EBGA. Here, basically what they have is a RTX 30 series order and you get on the list and then when it's your turn you're allowed to buy it you can only buy one card but go get on the list because this is going to be a way that you can pick up another additional card once they get to you in line but the most effective strategy that i've had is finding local stores so if you open a uh, google maps let's see if i have one pulled up here yeah you open Google Maps in your town, and this, for example, is uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And essentially, I just did an electronic store search. And you probably know your area a little bit better. And some people, you know, you won't have this option. But if you do, you want to go ahead and find a store. Now, Kansas City is not a great example because it has Micro Center. But we can still use the same principle with Micro Center. You need to find all the electronic stores in your area and you need to go into the store. The smaller the store, the better. And the reason for that is the smaller the store, the less likely people are going into that store, which means you can be higher on the list. You wanna get on a physical list. Now, this is something that I've done at local electronic stores here. And once you're on the physical list, this is very important. You want to make sure that as soon as they call you and tell you it's in, that if they offer payments over the phone, you pay them over the phone or you drive up right away and pay for that item as soon as they tell you. Because the thing is, is if you're running a store and you're going through the list and you call someone and they say, okay, I'll come by, you know, Tuesday or whatever, or I'll come by in a couple hours and they never show up, but the guy you call that shows up right away, you're gonna just, honestly, they're gonna bump you up on the list for the future. And that's how that functions. Another thing you can do is, hey man, these guys are working during you know a pandemic in like a very stressful time in retail, which has gotta be stressful as heck. Not only that, they're working in an industry that is short on stock. So I'm sure they're getting super negative customer interactions all the time. Maybe give them a Amazon gift card or a Starbucks gift card and say, hey, thanks. Thanks, this means a lot. I really needed this. And let them know that you appreciate them and they're gonna be more likely to give you a call back. This even does work at places like Micro Center. It's still the same people working there. There's that face-to-face -face interaction that you shouldn't you know, just ignore. That's a very big part of being able to be successful in a lot of things in life. And it's definitely success it helps you be more successful when you're purchasing graphics cards. So that's a little tip for me as far as that goes. And then finally you have Craigslist. Now Craigslist, I'm not a huge fan of, but you know, you can find some deals. I see a deal here for a Nitro Plus RX 580 in Oklahoma City, and it's $300. Here's the problem. First of all, you wanna check the reply. If it doesn't have a phone number in the reply and you're sending an email, it's probably not real. You can take the chance if you like and send it off. But usually if people really want to sell something, especially at an uptick of price, they're going to have their phone number in there. So just be cautious. Make sure you don't click any links or get fished when they send you something like crazy. Now this one does have 
uh, you know, what appears to be pretty legitimate pictures. It could be real, it could be not. But this finally brings me to, that's actually like trying to find graphics cards. You have Facebook Messenger or Facebook Marketplace, I think it is. I don't really use it. Um, there's a lot of scams on there and sketchy and it's hard to navigate for me. So I don't really use it. I use retail and that's pretty much it. The reason I use retail is I don't really care to overpay. I don't go to things like eBay or anything like that. Already retailers have upticked the price on cards, meaning like their original retail cost is now more. And that is across everybody, even EVGA stores. So when you go and purchase, it's not gonna be what the launch MSRP was. And that can be okay with certain graphics cards. I actually have a list here and we'll talk about that. But you, you have at least the ability, if you're getting on lists and so on and so forth, to buy it for what would be MSRP and you really don't want to be going and overpaying for graphics cards. There may be some cases where you can. And what I did is I just set up basically a chart of graphics cards, their hash rates and what their payoff would be in 90 days. And then I calculated out how much money that would be to pay that card off in 90 days versus, you know, while it's mining. The reason I did that is kind of twofold. One is like, well, I don't, know what's happening with ethereum and since i don't know what's happening with ethereum i'm going to be cautious on the amount of graphics cards i buy to mine ethereum the fact is at this point the reason mining is profitable is because of ethereum primarily there are a couple other options that we'll talk about here at the end of the video but being that Ethereum is the number one coin to pay or to be able to mine with a graphics card and pay them off in time, we have a couple problems there. We have EIP-1559 and EIP-1559 essentially is going to potentially drop the profitability of mining Ethereum. Do we know that for sure? No. Should we be worried about it? Probably because that's obviously going to adjust your ROI and so on and so forth. Now, from what I saw on Twitter and so on and so forth, they're fighting it. The, even people that are for EIP-1559 are saying, hey, what if we piss off all the miners and we lose you know, the miners and then Ethereum takes a big dump? That could be really harmful to the whole entire Ethereum network. They're, that's kind of the thought process I'm seeing when I see non-miners talking about it. They're more talking about it from the perspective of being scared about miners not mining Ethereum anymore. And that could be true, that could be not. The fact is we don't know how profitable it's gonna be. And I have a whole video talking about exactly what it does on this channel that you can go check out. End of the, end of the day, we're looking at some time within the next three to six months of them rolling this out. And then second to that, is that they are talking about now making ETH1 move to proof of stake before going to ETH 2.0. And this is something that they've been talking about or put on their roadmap essentially, which is kind of odd. But what that means is that it, as opposed to before where the move to proof of stake was gonna come with Ethereum 2.0, it looks like proof of stake will come a little bit before 2.0 to ETH1 because essentially if you guys understand how the sharding is going to work, ETH1 is just going to be a, a shard within ETH2.0. So if they make it proof of stake beforehand, it probably makes it easier for them to just push it into, of course, the shards. Now. I have a lot of opinions on sharding and ETH and other places that I think handle this much better, but you know, we can talk about that in a different video. If you would like me to talk about implementations of basically scalability on the Ethereum blockchain, let me know in the comment section below. I've been developing quite a few different ones. We can make, probably do a talking head, but at the end of the day, because we have a shorter lifespan and I am uncertain on what that lifespan is, I want to make sure I pay the GPU off within 90 days at this point, especially because they were saying that they're going to go to proof of stake in 2021. So we're in that 2021 phase. We don't want cards that are going to take 
past 2021 to pay off. And with EIP 1559 being questionable on how it affects profits and that coming even sooner, I kind of want to pay it off before I think that's going to happen. So that's where the 90 days happen. Okay. And basically if we go ahead and calculate that out, if I'm going to buy an RTX 5600 XT, I don't want to pay more than $454 at this time. If I buy an RX 5700 XT, I do not want to pay more than $572 US dollars at this time. If I'm buying an RTX 3060 Ti, I don't want to pay currently more than $623. If I'm buying an RTX 3070, it's the same profitability as a 30 Ti, 3060 Ti, so I don't want to pay more than $623. These are my GPU buying strategies, by the way. And the RTX 3080, currently I would not wanna pay more than $992, which is actually lower than initial MSRP. That's me, like I said, it's up to you what you wanna do. There are also the ideas of being able to flip them, so on and so forth. But moving on down the list, the RTX 3090, obviously we talked about this. It's a no buy at all, ever. It's going to cost, you would need it to cost $1,238 and you're not going to find one for that. RX 6800, we have set at needing to pay $628 or less, which is achievable if you can find them at retail. The RX 6800 XT is the same, 628. And the RX 6900 XT, thanks to additional memory that puts it up to 64 mega hash a second, would be 60, $662. US. And then finally, I added the RX 580 because I have one, I have been able to test them. And with the average hash rate of being between, of being, I just put it at 27 mega hash a second because that's a safe number. There's a lot more that goes into the RX 580 for BIOS modding and individual card, like unicorn cards as well. But that one's going to run you, you wouldn't want to pay more than 275, which is why back here, I wouldn't even go purchase this off Craigslist or waste my time trying to do that. So that's kind of the whole idea behind this and my GPU buying strategies. And using this, I have picked up five total cards this month already. And it just takes a little bit of effort, right? So if you're willing to put in the effort, you can do it. Don't cave and buy a whole bunch of GPUs for way overpriced on eBay or something like that, or even Craigslist. Now, let's talk about some of the positives. There are a couple projects that are basically coming up and about that are mineable. And so if we take a look at the profitability of a 3060 Ti, which is kind of the hot spot for mining right now, there are some coins that are not terrible with profit. But the question is, Will they maintain profitability during a bear market? And will they maintain profitability if, for example, ETH goes proof of stake? So when ETH goes proof of stake, all the, coin, all the other coins, as people start to filter out to them, will increase significantly in difficulty. So right now it may look like Conflex is, you know, pretty good. I, you could say, Hey, you know, if I buy this 3060 Ti and it's 788 and it drops down to, you know, and it becomes unminable, I'll just go to Conflux and I'll make 559 a day. Well, hold your horses. The thing is, everybody else is thinking the same thing. And what happens when a whole bunch of people move to a network? It increases the difficulty of that network, meaning the profitability will drop. So this estimate of 559 will not look the same at all once the difficulty of the conflux network goes way up that being said conflux does handle mining pretty well and if you read their white paper they have a lot of good ideas they're basically going to try to be eth 1.0 but kind of with a whole a pre, it's basically sorry it's basically like a whole hybrid where it's eth 2.0 or polka dot but a mineable version so in theory, if they have multiple tokens running on this network and you can mine all of them individually on separate chains, it is possible that they can keep the difficulty low. 
which means that Conflux, and we'll have to see where it goes from here, but Conflux could be a huge solution for miners uh, just purely based on that. And I find that pretty cool. Um, so I wanted to mention that if you think of it like basically parachains from DOT or shards from Ethereum, but you made them mineable. Speaking of which, DOT, yes, you can make a mineable chain and we can talk about that in another video. It's just not, they're not doing that. N nobody's really done it that much, if at all. I, I don't think it's actually been done at all yet. But if you did it on Conflux, it's basically all the chains are mi mineable and it's scalable it means that you could probably keep the difficulty down on on it because you could spread that out across the network at least my understanding of it if i misunderstand you guys are welcome to always correct me in the comments by the way but as i understand how conflux's white paper is written this is the idea so it is possible that it does combat that difficulty problem that we talked about. However, there are some coins that won't combat that. Ravencoin, for example, won't be able to combat that. Beam won't be able to combat that. However, those are options that could be, you know, viable just depending on the price of the coin and so on and so forth. But you just basically need to be prepared to not be able to pay off the cards if ETH goes proof of stake. And so that really comes into the gpu buying strategy because you don't want to be stuck with cards and here's what happens that a lot of people don't realize when it goes into a bear market or let's say just eth goes proof of stake the market's going to be flooded with graphics cards from all the miners and there are big farms out there and what happens when supply goes up and demand goes down? Well, the price goes down with it. So if you're going to try to mine all the way through Ethereum's profitability and you're not planning on, you know, getting rid of the cards beforehand, then you can't really factor in the cost of the card at that high point. Now, we have talked about buying graphics cards that are higher end because they'll resale better. And that's a valid opinion. Things like the newer cards, like the 3000 series, are going to resell better. But if, if there's a ton of 3080s and 3060 Ti's on the market, it doesn't really matter that gamers want them because gamers only need how many GPUs? One. Yeah, you could say, well, what about businesses? They don't need them. They're going to use enterprise grade graphics cards. They don't need them. All right. So be honest with yourself when you're thinking about these things. Don't just think that like you're going to buy a 3080 right now for $1,500, mine on it and worst and not be able to pay it off in 90 days. And then worst case, your profitability dips in 90 days and you can't pay it off for another year. And then you're like, okay, well, I'll just put it on the market at that time and get a thousand dollars probably not because the amount of 3080s that are going to go onto the market when that happens is going to be astronomical so this happened with rx 580s and 480s and 570s and 470s and we saw this again people were paying four five six seven even saw people buying them for eight hundred dollars a pop and then the the market crashed and they put them out to sell and they there were some people trying to get like 200 for them but like the price was like 75 bucks for an 8 gig 580 and that's just honest truth when it started to go back up you know it, it got back up to maybe 125 dollars at best so keep all of these things in mind don't go out and overspend on gpus thinking you're going to make all this money there's a lot more that goes into it so i hope this was helpful and you got some insight on kind of what i do i'd like to hear what you guys do and let me know in the comment section below i am going to take the rest of the day off go hang out with my son we'll be coming at you guys tomorrow with two more videos and thanks to everybody who showed up to the live stream today while we were trying to get the rocket chat up and going with dark mode that was a lot of fun i hope you guys had fun with it if you like those live streams let me know in the comment section below we'll try to plan something out to do a few more of them at this time, we're only going to do one video today. Um, and then tomorrow, if you guys want to do another live stream, we'll consider that. Otherwise, we'll go back to planning on two fully edited videos. I will see you next Tuesday.